Hi, I'm August Pokorok, and this summer I had the opportunity to intern with the fabulous people here at Plexum. Over the course of my internship, I was able to learn a huge amount about everything from power electronics to how to make a video. I spent a lot of my time working on developing a target support package for the TIC2000, specifically working on CAN messaging. Let me tell you about that right now. Welcome to the Plex Model of the Month video series. In this month's video, I will show off some of the work I've been doing with CAN messaging with the TIC2000 using the Plex Coda. While this is certainly uh, not the most complex model you've ever seen, it should still give you an idea of how powerful the Plex Coda and custom masks can be. A controller area network, or CAN bus, is a message-based protocol originally designed to facilitate multiplexing of wiring in cars in order to reduce copper usage. Nowadays, it is used in a wide variety of automotive and industrial applications. Each message can be up to 8 bytes long, and it has an 11 or 19-bit long ID. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so here we have the blocks I made. We have a read can, a write can, and cast blocks that allow sending and receiving of floats over can. There's also a digital out, which I didn't make, but will be using. The code tab is really where the work happens, because sending the data within Plex is easy. There's no particular need for a complicated schematic. Here is the Lua code I've written inside the block. This is what informs the coder which C code to generate. Pretty much every string here is C code using some functions which I wrote for this purpose. I use string format to put in the specific parameters needed by each individual block. The three main sections are init code here, which runs once, output code, which runs once per step, and output signal, which is called every time a block's output is referenced. The right can block functions pretty similarly, aside from the fact that it's using a couple of slightly different functions. The only large difference is there's no output signal needed. I'm going to now quickly make an example program to show how simple it can be. My goal is to read a can message, do something with that message to prove we read it correctly, and then write a can message. Here is our input. I have it hooked up to a CAN reader. You can see the output on the top. So it looks like our ID is uh, 7FF, the first two bytes of data are being used, and when the pedal is fully pressed down, the maximum value I've seen is FFD, which is 4093, and the minimum is 6C, which is 108. That means there is a range of 3985. All right, so we want a start byte of zero, get two bytes of data. It's also worth mentioning we could get an array of different data segments, but for the pedal, we don't have a reason to. Our ID is 0x7ff. Also, the lengths are not in bits. Okay, uh, now I'll just take a subtract block, a divide block, a couple of constants, connect everything together. And we should have the output becoming a float between 0 and 1. The first thing is to hook up the LED built into the board. So as I press the pedal, the brightness should change. And to do this, we need a PWM block. I'm also going to use one of those cast blocks to send the float I calculated over CAN. The Output is 32 bits long, so and just to show how both work, um, I'll say 32 bits instead of 4 bytes. Set a random ID, this time in binary. That's it. Looks pretty good. Now I'll go to the build menu and build it. Good, the LED is working properly. Um, now I just need to see if the casting works. Put the pedal at the halfway point, so the value should be about 0.5. Now I just need to copy all of that. And moment of truth. Works. 
there you have it, a simple example of some custom-made Plex blocks doing their job. Please submit your Plex models to info at plexum.com for a chance to have your model displayed. For more videos and other information, please visit our website at www.plexum.com. Thanks for watching.